Okay, so uh, here is the first application problem that we're going to take a look at. So I'll give you a chance to, uh, to look at this and write this down. Of course, you can always pause the video if you need to take this down, but let me go ahead and read it for you. Suppose that an object attached to a coiled spring, so we have a model that looks like this that I showed you earlier in the previous introduction video. Uh, that's, it's, it's attached to a coiled spring and it's pulled down a distance of 10 inches. So this is actually going to be the, the graph that's going to describe that because we're actually pulling that all the way down uh, to here. Then uh, we release it and it's going to go back and forth with simple harmonic motion. We're going to assume that there's no friction or air resistance. We're going to assume that it does keep doing this forever. In actuality, this will actually go back and forth and it's eventually going to level down. That's called damp motion. And that's more realistically what that would look like if we had uh, you know, uh, friction and air resistance. But we're going to ignore all that uh, in this case. We'll assume that it just keeps going up and down there forever. Okay, so when we release it, it's going to keep on going up and down. It says the time of the oscillation is uh, 3 seconds. That's our T. They want us to develop a model that relates to the displacement D of the object from this rest position after... Uh, time t in seconds. It says positive direction of the motion is up. That makes sense here because going up here with a regular traditional graph that would be positive anyway. Okay, so this is basically the, the whole problem. So now all we have to do is we're going to come up with a model. Now in the first video, the introduction video, we have two different models. We have a, a d cosine or we have a d sine. We have to choose which one of those base models that we want to start with. Now in this particular problem the whole experiment begins by pulling the weight down 10 inches. So therefore, probably the one I want to use is I want to use this one. I want to do A cosine omega t. I'm purposely choosing a cos uh, cosine one because again, cosine graphs will always start uh, at the amplitude. If they want you to start at the rest position, that means we'd be using a sine graph. But this particular one, we want to start with a cosine. Now in order to get them, this is the base formula that we'll use to get the model, but we have two different variables we have to figure out. We have to figure out the A and we have to figure out the omega. Now, the omega we can actually figure out. Let's do that one first. The formula for it is we have your period is equal to 2 pi over omega. Now they actually tell us the period here. They tell us that the time of oscillation is 3 seconds. That is the period. So we'll put a 3 in there for the period and this is equal to 2 pi over omega and we can solve that and if you solve all that you get omega is equal to 2 pi over 3 by cross multiplying or multiply both sides by omega divide by 3 you'll get this so now I already I know one piece of my formula I know omega is going to be uh, 2 pi over 3 well now we have to figure out the uh, amplitude there now the amplitude is how far down you actually pull it so uh, we actually we have 10, so your A is, go is going to be uh, 10 in this case. So when we rewrite the formula, let's go ahead and rewrite this now, you, putting, the putting the pieces back in. I have 10 cosine, I have 2 pi over 3 t. Now this actually is not considered correct yet. The reason why is because Regular cosine graphs, when you gr draw them, going back to the section where we, ha we were graphing sines and cosines, the cosine graph actually always starts at whatever this is. So if it's 10, I'll start it up here at 10. However, this problem, I'm beginning by pulling it down. So I'm actually starting it down at that position. This is be the correct picture that would go along with this particular graph. I'm starting it down there, which means that I actually have to put a negative next to my answer because that indicates if I put a zero in for time I want it to end up being down here and I know that cosine of zero is one so if uh, this whole part is one I need to make it start at negative ten so that's why I need to put the negative sign in there for part of my answer so all they want is just the actual formula that fits this particular problem so here it is it's going to be d equals negative ten cosine two pi over three t that would be the specific one that would describe this particular experiment. And again, that's we use our the picture here is a good aid on that. Again, we're beginning by pulling it down, so it starts down below here. Again, that's why we have to have the negative there next to the 10.